backstory on that chart film so what happened was i had my sister playing the main character i was just a fill-in and i was also the camera guy the audio tech everything in one so upon reviewing the footage after we finished shooting the next day and i realized that the audio was no good the audio was no good so i don't think that short film will be seen the light of day sad to say <laughs> but we got some really good scenes, so I'll definitely be sharing scenes from that short film on my Instagram or on Treads. So you guys go and follow. The name will be right here. So stay tuned for that because we got some really dope footage. It's a nice storyline, everything. The audio was just no good. So that's that. No crying over swimming here. So what this video is about today i'm going to show you how i color graded the short film sequence that you watched in the intro in davinci resolve using dehancer film emulation tool so i've been hiding the dehancer plugin for some time now i've been seeing creators online using this plugin to achieve some great looks so when they reached out to me in my email asking if i like to try the plugin out i said yes sure why not yes save me some money I can see if I like it and thing. So we're going to hop on over to DaVinci and get this video started. All right, so now we're in DaVinci Resolve. And here you could see I use an adjustment clip to get the letterbox effect with the cropping, all right, top and bottom. And then over onto the color page, you could see on the first node, the only node that I use um, the Deanza plugin to do everything from the footage conversion to Rec 709, etc. So once you add the dehancer plugin um, here, once you search it in effects, you type in dehancer, you drag that on over to your node, and all is well. We're back on dehancer now. Under the input settings, what I suggest you do is you hold down option and click to close it down so it doesn't feel overwhelming because there's a lot of stuff here to go through when grading your footage. Under the input settings, because we're gonna go through them one by one, you choose your camera. So this film was shot on the Blackmagic 6K Pro. So you see I select Blackmagic Design here, Pocket Cinema 6K Pro, and then it automatically select the format for me, which is the Film Gen 5, right? And then from here, you could go through and adjust your brightness, the temperature of your film, so you want it cool or warm. I was leaning more to the warm side, so for that and then you could add in your greens or magentas with the team compensation all right so after you finish with that you close it down under flame i went with this kodak portra 160 i like the look of it and after you add it in because there's crazy amount of 
flim presets here right and they're all good but the kodak sit well with me all right so i definitely recommend you go through and see which one works best for your video but that's the one that sit well with me and then it has a push and pull slider here so you could use it to enhance how much of it you need on your flim right and this is a trial and error um testing phase there's no current number to use here it's really up to you with your preference so somewhere little before the middle was perfect for me and that was that so if you want to disable to see what it's doing you just click enable on off on off you understand the flim developer tab now is where you control again your your brightness your saturation contrast etc so i like to use this section to add in colors to boost the colors right so it's use i use this as my saturation tool right to add colors in you could use that as a contrast as well but you could copy these settings so if you love the look of the short film you could pause the video right here copy my settings i don't mind so i'll definitely leave the lot for this below because it allows you to export the lot as well um so i'll leave the lots in the description below so you could try it out and also the answer give you a seven day free trial to see if you like the plugin before you purchase it so you could try it out go on the website link will be in the description try it out and if you do like it then you can purchase it right and also if you use my code style 10 you'll get 10 percent off your purchase all right but we'll get to that later down in the video so the next thing is flim compression right so the flim compression tool is nice it softens the highlight but i didn't use it on this specific clip because i wanted to have that puppy um bright look all right but it gives a good highlight roll off when you enable it so let's say if you're dealing with people and the the light is on their skin once you enable this it softens that highlight it makes the roll off between the highlights and the mid-tones look creamy good as i said you can copy my settings under the expand tool now as you can see enable disable let's see what it's doing right there let me go on a different clip so you can get a better idea all right so let's this clip of me right here i'm the farmer in this short clip <laughs> so enable disable as you can see it brightens it a bit um, adjust the black points and the white points in this flame right here. So now we're under the print tab. Let me enable and disable it so you could see what that is doing. So you know it was a bit warm and saturated, leaning more to the red. And then once I add the Fuji Flame 3513 print flame profile, enabled it, made a few adjustments to the color density, um, the saturation tonal contrast you know the exposure just to tweak it to my liking that's that for me so pause the video copy my settings and then we're going to go under the color head all right so for the color head why I, this is my favorite um section in the dancer plugin here now you could tweak your grade this is basically where you're doing your grading after conversion so i lean more towards the warmer side the yellow blue and magenta green as you can see what it's doing there so they always say to push it to the extreme and slowly pull it back to see what you're getting all right so just like that don't want too much red in the flame we just adjust it so you could adjust your shadow tone mid tones and your highlight preserve exposure and impact so the impact basically as it says to adjust how much it's affecting your footage all right so i left that at 100 it's good so let's turn it off on there you go all right all right so our next tab is flim grain currently i have it set to custom but originally i use 35 millimeter iso 50 because i don't like when my grains are too big all right and then once i select the profile that i want i go to custom and tweak it a bit as you can see my settings here all right so i'm not sure if you could see it so let me zoom in 
let me enable and disable it that's with it off that's with it on off on and you can use this to sharpen or de-sharpen your video because currently the flip resolution is at 74 so if i go like this you can see where the video gets soft so that is what i like with the hand so it gives you that natural sharpening as how it would if you were actually shooting on film that is that for film grain and then we have halation right so i use a super 8 8 millimeter um as you can see we have the reds and the leaves on the edges as you see i push and pull so you could see what it's doing so it made the highlights have a red glow to it so let slide it up put it back where it was about there so that's it for halation basically so you could go through the settings to see what works for you i don't like it too much but i like to, to see it a bit so that works for me so my amplifier is at 25 basically for the bloom now this works just like a mist filter so much so it blooms your highlights so the the, the, the the lighting doesn't seem that harsh so as you can see on on off on off that's it for bloom i normally skip flim damage or flim breed so what flim damage does is they you know those little scratches and dust that you see when you use overlay effects that you could find on youtube and such you could get that here naturally if you want it in your flim it's there all right so we're not going to use that one i normally skip over flim breed gate weave skip that as well over scan now so over scan tool basically gives you a box frame here. let me show you zoom out so you see this black box on the side so if that's an effect that you're going for this is how you achieve it so once you enable it you could just adjust it to how you please you could choose the profile that you want so that's eight millimeter 16 millimeter you know so there is quite a few options to 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 choose from and a whole lot of settings to play with to achieve that effect and you can also use this to create some nice overlay packs if you're into that stuff you understand so that is that but we're not using that for this film so that's it so we're not going to use the vignette either because i just want the video to have that bright type of look that's that's the look i'm going for as i said if you need vignetting if it's the style that you want you could use that so it's pulling me i'm not going to use that so for the monitor i don't have my trouble that but you could use this to see if your footage is overexposed or underexposed using the false color so when you turn that on you can see normally one they say once you're in the gray or green where the skin tones are concerned you're perfectly exposed anything that is in the blue or the black is underexposed or little to no detail so that is nice to have anything red and yellow is overexposed as you can see here in the footage right and then you could turn on clipping indication as you can see i have no clipping so you're not seeing anything all right and then on the output now this controls the whole overall thing that you did on your footage so if you just want it to be like 50 percent and not much we just slide the slider and that controls the intensity of the overall plugin all right so you could generate a lot from what you just created by just clicking export lot and save where you want use it back later on other footages in other programs and it should be good um basically that's how i achieved the look of this short film that will never see the light of day but it's okay we'll be shooting many more so stay tuned make sure you subscribe for that so quick plug let's say you're not into cinema cameras or shooting and editing any form of short films on any computer any at all but you're a phone content creator but you want to achieve this look let me tell you the answer has a phone app as well where you could achieve the same effect but on your phone so head on over to the app store type in the answer download the app it's only 90 dollars per year but they do give you a free trial to see if it's something that you like and once you're in the app you'll see where 
you could add your footage in select from the countless amount of profiles that they have already preset and once you find one that is close to what you're going for you could also tweak that by going under the edit adjust the settings and countless amount of settings seem like the one that is on the computer so it's a nice app to have if you want to achieve that flim look on your footage that is shot on your phone so head on over to the app store try that out link will be in the description i really like this plugin i like the fact that it gave me the motivation that i needed to edit this film even though it's not gonna see the light of day but color grading this using the plugin um let me feel like a pro colorist you know like naturally with just da vinci um color grading tools i would not be able to achieve this look that i have right here and it makes the film feel more like a film something that you will watch in theaters right but what i have to say about it that i don't like is that the fact that there is a lot of tools to go through with little to no information on what it does so maybe i'll say put a little info section right here to give us a brief summary of what the tool does so you could know um if you want to use this or not because a lot of them once you turn it on you, you don't really see what it's doing unless you know what you're looking for all right also it's pretty heavy on the system i'm currently editing on an m1 max macbook pro 32 gigs of ram one terabyte ssd and it drags you don't get a full solid playback it drags so you'll definitely have to either turn on render cache to render it out to play to see how it looks but it drags and this is a very powerful laptop and it drags so if they could figure out a way to not make it be so heavy on the system then it's good my next gripe is the price it's a pretty pricey plugin right comes in around 450 i think um i'll put it on the screen here and it's been a plugin that i've been eyeing for a while but as i said i've been contemplating because the price is pretty up there and i can understand that the price is the price because at the time they were the only one with a plugin like this but now davinci includes it in davinci studio so i would say if you could just tweak the price a bit or come up with a subscription base thing where you know make it easier for people like maybe 20 dollars a month or something like that but it's a pretty good plugin to have if you can afford it i would say buy it use my code style 10 to get 10 percent off but I think the price is what will make most people not want to use this plugin but even though it's expensive it's worth it like look at what you just watched um, and trust me I'm a beginner using this plugin I don't know nothing about film but look what I did um, it's pretty straightforward like you could just go in step by step make certain adjustments and get the look that you want but the price but that's that for this video let me know in the comments if you like what you just watched if you're going to try out the answer plugin because as i said they give you a seven day free trial you could try it all right guys until the next video see you in the next one peace